Hello and what is going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well. It's Duoscape here and today I have a fantastic money making guide for all of you mid to high level players out there. You guys have absolutely been killing it with the support lately and we're closing in on 4,000 subscribers already which is absolutely insane. If you haven't subscribed already and you're enjoying the guides, finding the content useful, liking our series, all of that fun stuff, then please please join us on our journey and subscribe to the channel. The requirements that you're going to need to do this are 73 summoning and ancient summoning unlocked and you must have made the frozen key. The frozen key is necessary to get into the next arena. Don't worry, we're not going to be killing next. You simply just need to be able to get into the kill count arena for next. Let's take a look at the gear loadout that I'd recommend for this method. I'd recommend having tier 70 plus armor. In the preset that I'm showing, I have Anima Court of Zamorak and in the footage that I'm going to be showing, I'm using Serenic. This is simply due to the fact that this is the gear that I have on my account. If you have a set of armor deal that will work fine and you do not need a tier 85 weapon like the wyvern crossbow you can simply use a set of glaives you can use a royal crossbow anything tier 70 plus realistically obviously the lower you go the less kills an hour you're going to be getting and the less profit an hour you're going to be making so please bear that in mind so in order you want tier 70 armor i'd recommend at least armor deal with some basic perks on there you'll want the shard of zaros the Shard of Zaros can be obtained from the Fate of the Gods quest. However, do not worry if you don't have this. I haven't put that quest as a hard requirement because you can just wear a piece of Nex armor. For example, you could put on a set of Pernix boots, Vertis boots, Torva boots, whatever floats your boat. The weapon I'm going to be using is a Wyvern crossbow because it's a tier 85 that has some pretty decent poison damage and additional buffs. Obviously, the higher the better, the more kills an hour you're going to be able to get. But this is the weapon I'm going to be using in this video. I'd recommend having a Blood Amulet of Fury so that you can get some cheeky heals. You don't need an aura to do this method. You don't need food. And I'm able to sustain myself just off of this and Soul Split. Even if you don't have all of these things, you can just bring a couple sharks and that will suffice. Cinderbane Gloves work a charm here and they will be best in slot because the monsters that we're going to be killing are susceptible to weapon poison. Obviously, if you don't have these, you will be getting slightly less kills an hour once again. But other gloves such as Pernix Gloves, Nightmare Gauntlets, all of them will work fine. Fleeting boots are also pretty nice here because being able to move while using rapid fire is fantastic because there is a lot of moving back and forth in the arena. However, if you don't have these, any range boots will be fine. Using a set of silver hawk boots will work perfectly. The luck of the dwarves does not matter and the bolts don't really matter, hence why I have not labeled them on the screen. The reason I have a luck of the dwarves on is just because it has decent stats and it's a ring that I have in a bank. Bring a ring of vigor, you're not going to be using ultimates. Bring a Asylum Surgeon's ring, a Reaver ring, whatever ring you want, it doesn't matter too much. I'm using Ascension Bolts because they're cheap and a Max Cape because it's a well-rounded cape. Just obviously bring the best cape that you have, the best ring slot that you have. You do not need Luck of the Dwarves to make any money from this. Do not worry about that because there's no rare drops involved. Now that we've covered the gear setup, let's actually have a look at the inventory setup that I'd recommend. You want some overloads or stat boosting potions. You don't need overloads for the method, but... If you have overloads, you may as well use them to maximize your kills an hour and therefore your profits. At slot number two, we want super prayer renewals. This is so that we can easily sustain our soul split and damage in prayer. Once again, not necessary, but they will factor in more kills an hour. Same thing can be said about weapon poison plus plus plus. If you don't want to spend the extra money on this and you don't have cinder banes, skip this one out. But I would recommend it to anyone out there that would like to spend the money to get extra kills. I bring a couple super restores. You can chuck on a penance aura. You can chuck on a vampirism aura. All of these things can be done to make it overall less resource intensive. However, I don't want to recommend you needing an aura when you don't actually need to use one. So I'd recommend bringing a few super restores. Obviously, fill up your invent for however long you want to do this for. And you will need roughly eight to last a full hour using soul split and a tier 95 damage in prayer. You're going to need magic note paper and binding contracts. You're going to be using about 600 binding contracts an hour and therefore 600 magic note paper an hour. All of these numbers are using a suboptimal setup. For example, if you have the tier 99 damage in prayer or you have greater ricochet, you'll be able to get even more kills. But for the sakes of simplicity, I have tested this method without any of the overpowered late game stuff because this method isn't really advertised out there to people with that stuff. They can do much better things. An Ancient Elven Ritual Shard and Enhanced Excalibur. All for the people out there that love getting the utility out of them. Not necessary whatsoever, but it will save you some money on some prayer points. And it can be used to heal you if you need it. I'd recommend to anyone out there that's actually doing this money making method, check how much money you can make before doing it. The prices will fluctuate when more people do this. And over time it may change. So if you are going to do this method, head over to the Grand Exchange. Buy two of the... 
Blood of Orcus and Hellfire Metals. See how much they cost you. Add on 5,000 for the cost of the spirit shards that you need to make these. And then buy yourself a Blood Reaver pouch. Work out the difference between the cost of the Blood Reaver pouch and the cost to make the binding contract. And that's how much profit you're going to be making per one of these. And then you multiply that by 600 to work out your hourly rate. For example, if you're only going to be making 10,000 per one of these, the profit an hour is going to be 6 million. If you're making 20,000, 12 million, 30,000, 18 million, and so forth. We'll cover in how much you can actually make at the current moment in time towards the end of the video, but please make sure you check the price of all of these items before you get into the method. Another important thing for you guys who want to maximize your profits, you want to actually be slow buying and slow selling all of the items. For those of you familiar with flipping, you can skip ahead because you already know how to do this, but I'll briefly explain it for anyone out there that does not. If you buy a Blood Orcus plus 20% and then sell it for minus 20% and put an offer in for 1 GP over what it's sold for to buy them, you'll be buying them at the cheapest possible price for that moment in time. This isn't too important when it comes to making them and more so when you're selling them. So when it comes to actually selling the ones that you've made, go to the Grand Exchange put in an offer to buy a Blood Reaver pouch for plus 20%. Say for argument's sake, it's 75,000. If you then put an offer in to sell all of your Blood Reaver pouches for 74,999, you will be able to sell them for the maximum amount of GP possible. If you go into the Grand Exchange and minus 20% to sell these, you're going to ruin the method for everyone else. If you constantly lower the price and sell them instantly, the whole market will crash and the actual value of Blood Reaver pouches will drastically decrease. Of course, they're going to decrease when supply and demand levels out. However, if you force it by being impatient, you will lose money even faster. So make sure you check all of the margins before doing this and make sure to slow sell your Blood Reaver pouches to maximize your profits. And finally, to make your binding contracts, you want to actually come to Tavali, to the Summoning Obelisk. You want to sell between 1 and 200 of your materials to Magistix, and you want to buy them back off of him. You will buy them 10 at a time, and you will craft them right there and then. This is the fastest and most efficient way to make these. Now that everything's covered, we can actually show you guys how to do the method itself. There's nothing too complicated with this method and all it pretty much entails is running around the next kill count arena, killing blood reavers, filling up the binding contracts, noting them, rinse and repeating. There is around five and six of them that spawn in the arena, one all the way to the east and the rest clustered in the middle and you're going to just run around and kill them one by one. There will be more efficient ways to do this and the way that I'm showing you is a very achievable way for many players out there. I will include the revolution bar on the screen now and this is what I opt to use and there's nothing special to this method whatsoever. You kill them, you run up to the one that strayed on the east, you kill him, you come back down and kill them as they're respawning. Obviously to maximize your efficiency here you want your best damage boost in prayer, you want your overloads, all of that fun stuff and of course if you have greater ricochet put that at the start of your bar that will increase your kills a lot more as well. I do not think it will be worth death swifting purely due to the fact that they die so quick anyways and you won't be able to reach all of them with your death swift and it will probably be more worth your time just using thresholds. If you wanted to use full manual and have better abilities than I do that works fine. If you want to use magic that also works fine. Melee works fine too but you're going to be spending a lot of time running in between them so it won't be as fast. But that's pretty much it. You're just running back and forth. You're killing these one by one and making sure to note all of the Blood Reaver pouches. They do drop some notable drops that cost between 10 and 20,000. You can use a herb sack to bank all of the herbs. You can use a legendary familiar to pick them up. I personally turn this off halfway through because it was just annoying clogging up your inventory with super magic potions, ghost ones. But if you did want to increase the amount of profit that you make and you're on the ball, you can know all of these things very quickly and not lose any efficiency in doing so and make some additional profits. And that's pretty much it. From my testing, I was able to make 100 pouches with this mediocre setup in roughly 10 minutes, which is 600 an hour. And we're going to cover the breakdown of all the profits that you can make later. I am not going to go too in-depth to which perks I'd recommend for this method because, quite frankly, they're not really too necessary. Obviously, you want all of the standard ones. You want precise 6, equilibrium 4. That's a nice go-to, a nice staple that I'd recommend to anyone out there doing any combat. On my armor, I'm using Biting 2 Venom Blood, Enhanced Devoted, Crackling Relentless, and Impatient 4. The main important one there being Biting, 
and crackling and relentless they are going to increase the amount of damage you can deal overall the rest of them are nice well-rounded perks that you should have on your armor anyways another great thing that you can actually use for these if you're the kind of guy that does a lot of ripper demons and abyssal demons these do count as demons so if you can get some demon slayer perk on your gear and even the sigil but i'm, I'm going to be honest do not use the demon slayer sigil here if you've got a demon slayer sigil you're probably better off making more money elsewhere if you put the demon slayer perk on your gear you can get an extra seven percent damage against these guys which will result in more kills an hour like i said i don't think it's too important it's definitely something out there for anyone that wants to do this long term so now that we've taken a look at the method i didn't want to put anything fancy in there like any crazy strats that you could do or anything purely due to the fact that it's meant to be a simple guide and i don't want to over complicate something that doesn't have to be either way let's break down the amount of profit you can make an hour at this current moment in time the amount of kills an hour that you're able to achieve is 600 when you're on the ball with this exact gear setup that i have it will be more it will be less depending on how good you are at the game and what gear you are using the time it takes to make 600 binding contracts is around 12 minutes for the average player you can make roughly 3,000 of them using the Tavoli method buying and selling them back and this is important to factor in how much money you can make an hour because obviously that is time spent the cost per binding contract at current market prices is 30,668 this fluctuates all the time it will probably increase if a lot of people do this and it will decrease if a lot of people do archaeology. Make sure you check the margins before, as previously mentioned, to actually see how much you're spending when doing this. If you slow sell the Blood Reaver pouch, you will be able to sell it currently for 75,900 each. This is if you put an offer in and slow sell it for that price. If you instantly sell these, you're going to be making a lot less, probably around 70,000 per one. So I definitely recommend taking the time to slow sell these. The profit per pouch at the current moment in time is 75,900 minus the cost it takes to make the binding contract pouch itself of 30,668, which means the profit you're able to make per pouch is 45,232 BP. And then we can actually use this to work out how much you're making an hour getting 600 kills, which is 27.1 million. However, you need to include that 12 minutes it takes to make the 600 to upkeep. And that will bring us all the way down to 22.6 million GP an hour. There are other costs that you entail. You have your note paper costs. You have your armor charges. I'm going to recommend using armor deal for this personally. But if you do have ceramic like I do, you're going to be having a cost of about 920,000 per hour. You use about 1% of your ceramic an hour, which is roughly 400k. And overall, that results in just over 21 million GP an hour for something relatively simple and relatively accessible for many players. Like I said, if a lot of people do this, the prices will go down. But the reason I want to get this out for you guys, it's not a fun method, it's not AFK, and it's not accessible by everyone. And because of this, when people get bored of doing it, and more people are using the Blood Reaver pouches, which they currently are, because people are finally realizing how significant they are. The specific content in the game, which by the way, if you haven't checked out how OP it is, go take a look at my Gregorovich melee and range setups for completely AFK kills, making you a ton of money an hour. If any hype gets created by this, I can guarantee you it will die down and the prices will return back to normal. So just make sure you check the margins when doing this method to ensure that the amount of profit you're going to be making is going to be worth your time. Even if you're making 22,000 per pouch, it's still going to be over 11 million GP an hour, which for a method like this is absolutely insane. Thank you for making it to the end of the video and good luck on making some easy money on your account. As always, if you found it useful, drop a like to help the algorithm and help push this out to more people. If you're enjoying the content and the uploads that we have on the channel, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. And let me know, do you guys prefer it when I keep things short and sweet and just get straight to the method? Or do you prefer it when I actually go in depth to explain every single thing that's necessary for the guide? I understand that a lot of you people out there know all of the ins and outs of the game, but there are a lot of people out there that believe it or not, don't know simple things like what does an Excalibur do? What does an Ancient Elven Ritual Shard do? So it's hard to actually find a balance on how much detail I should put into these, but let me know what you guys prefer. And thank you all for watching.